Matt Paterini here with the Non-Traditional Pharmacist, part of the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Welcome to the first installment of the Non-Traditional Pharmacist, Pharmacist Student Series. We're very excited about this new series that we've created here at the Non-Traditional Pharmacist, all about pharmacy students, for pharmacy students, really in the response to the changing pharmacy job market. We found, and we've talked with a lot of other people, that traditional pharmacy training is great and necessary, of course, but there are a lot of other things throughout your time in pharmacy school and entering the job market that you need to be aware of, need to think of ahead of time before you either decide on a career path that may not be right for you or choose one that you've never even seen coming and end up being a great career for the rest of your working life. So that's what this pharmacy podcast series is all about, but we can't take all of the credit. Um, this series was actually a, uh, the genesis of it was from a conversation we had with the wonderful Kaylin Davis, who just by pure chance, we were looking through Facebook as we often do on social media. And we see comments from pharmacy students, pharmacists on a number of different topics. And Kaylin reached out to Tony Guerra on one of his posts, who is another great uh, co-host of the Pharmacy Podcast Network, commenting about the current state of the pharmacy job market. So we want to talk with Kaylin and many other pharmacy students to get their perspective on what it's like to be a pharmacy student and that transition into the pharmacy job market. So Kaylin, welcome to the Nutritional Pharmacist. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. Yeah, no, thank you so much. I'm so excited about this and um, everything you said is true. I think this is going to be um, seriously something awesome. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. Awesome. So Kaylin is a P3 at Samford University. And the first question we'll ask Kaylin is, why did you go to pharmacy school in the first place? There's a lot of different choices, either further education or uh, professional training. Why did you choose pharmacy school? Yeah, um, really, it came by. Um, it, it wasn't my first option. Um, I had been told, like in high school, that uh, you know, pharmacy is a great career. Uh, it's a great career for women who want to also have a family. Um, it's uh, it has a lot of options or opportunities, I guess. Um, but I guess at first I was really timid to do something that was uh, so high esteemed, I guess. I wasn't science inclined from the get go. Uh, but so I went and I was pre-business, uh, found myself extremely unsatisfied and um, really just started to explore other options because I knew that wasn't going to be what I wanted to do. And um uh, was looking for something that was, um, you know, going to be sustainable, um, going to allow like, um, the work-life balance, uh, but also was going to be challenging and rewarding and, um, pharmacy school just kept kind of coming back and back. And, uh, so I decided to look more into it and then took the very large leap and, uh, here we are. So. Interesting. So it wasn't so much, the science aspect that drew you right. to pharmacy. So you did really consider a lot of different aspects of pharmacy as a profession before deciding to go to pharmacy school. Uh, yeah, I would say that's true. Um, a lot of people I talk to, you know, they've known they've wanted to do it for the longest time or they've all, uh, you know, they'll say something like I've always loved science or I wanted to be a doctor, but then chose this instead. Uh, and that, you know, I never grew up saying I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to do this. I just was um, looking for something that, you know, a lot of people said they want to help people. And I could say that was true for me. And um, this just kind of fit what I was looking for. So um, has yeah. the experience been similar to what you expected? Has it met expectations or has it been totally a crazy wild ride that you weren't expecting? Uh. 100% a crazy wild ride that I wasn't expecting. <laughs> um, you know, I don't have any family uh, that's ever, um, not only they're not pharmacists, but they've never been through a program like this before uh, or higher education like this. And so I had uh, no idea what to expect. Uh, I'd asked, you know, a couple of mentors and some 
uh, friends that were doing it, what it was like, but I don't think you truly know what it's like until you start to do it. And I know that you know that. Um, it was a culture shock. I mean, honestly, it, it's just extremely demanding and uh, requires a lot of commitment. Um, no, it really does. And, and I think sometimes people overlook how difficult uh, pharmacy school as a pharmacy school as a uh, program can be it's tough to see the big picture also when you're in the middle of school and there's so much activity there's so much studying that needs to be done how do you uh, keep the big picture in mind knowing that you will be graduating someday and in, uh, school work is important, but it may not be the most important when you're considering what career path to take after graduation. Yeah, um, I think it just takes a lot of self-reflection. Uh, I have to ask myself, um, why do I? Why did I choose this in the first place? Why? Why are you putting yourself through why? this? <laughs> exactly. I'm like, why? Why did I choose this life? Um, but you know, I think. On having mentors or really looking up to someone that's doing, a, you know, what you want to do, finding that uh, the people that are successful at it um, and just channeling your energy to them, like, how did they do it? What did they do? Um, how did they get through the process? Uh, it helps a lot. Um, but I would say one thing I didn't expect in school was just, or the profession itself, I was so unaware of the opportunity. Uh, and I know we've talked a lot about that, but. Um, you know, I really, all I knew and my family knew in the beginning was just, um, you worked at CVS or you worked at a hospital. Uh, and that was, and I was okay with that and still am. But, uh, you know, the more, the best thing about school I've seen is just, there's so much more to the profession than that. And it's been, uh, that's been kind of a way of motivating myself that, um, you know, there's always going to be an opportunity to do more. So I do love that about, um, pharmacy itself. That is so great to hear and, and refreshing to hear from a pharmacy student that is able to have the visibility into the whole profession and see that there is all that opportunity out there. It's just a matter of finding it in the right place and knowing the right people, asking the right questions. Um, and that all adds up to uh, the experience that you have in pharmacy school. With all that opportunity, where are your primary interests within pharmacy? Uh, as I it really, stands now yeah so like a career goal is that um or what I think I want to do with it or yeah where, where do you think you see is an interesting opportunity in the field of pharmacy it could be a general area in the profession it could be something you found interesting either in your own research or what you've heard about in school where, where are you gravitating towards in this yeah. big for, world of pharmacy um I think what I like the most um, is just the connection you can make with people. And then through those connections, uh, you know, the difference you can really make um, in their lives and in their health. And, um, you know, I think, I don't know when I said it, but it's like, you have to build trust with someone uh, in order, you know, to, for them to listen to you. And I think that's what pharmacists do uh, day in and day out. And so that's part of what got me, um, excited about the role that we can play as students and as pharmacists um just you know so many people come and even now they'll come to my work and ask like um my doctor said this but you know i want your opinion too and because they've been there for so long with that same pharmacist and um so i really enjoy the aspect of seeing um the patients grow and like learn more about themselves and their health. And so um, I think I talked with you about, I'm really am interested in the ambulatory care setting um, because I think you get to embody that, um, you know, in that setting, uh, still learning what all that entails and how to go about all of that. But um, I do think that that is where um, I see myself um, practicing or trying to anyway. No, that is all part of the, the whole pharmacy journey. It's, it's figuring out what, area you like to work in, or at least what type of work you like to do. Sometimes it may be more business related or more on a population health type level. Sometimes it's more in a direct patient care role and anywhere in between. That's what's so cool about it. What would you say are some of the things that might be missing from traditional 
pharmacy education and training that you may have learned on your own or had to find outside resources to learn more about? Yeah, um, you know, I think schools, they do an excellent job of uh, you know, teaching you uh, all the therapeutics you need to know, all the drugs and interactions and things like that. Um, and, uh, you know, they do touch a lot on, uh, you know, how to go about, like we have an ethics course and a human resources course, uh, but you miss a lot of just the everyday life situations um, that you don't think you're going to have to deal with and then they just show up. Uh, uh, I think uh, like insurance is a lot of that. Uh, I think, you know, how do you go about um, billing for this? How do you go about changing that? And uh, those are things, you know, you don't, they don't teach you that in a classroom and they don't, um, you know, I did say the profession has a lot of opportunity, but we're not always exposed to that um, in school. And that's one of the reasons I love what y'all do so much uh, is because you're working on exposing that. And um, I don't think it's because they, um, they don't try to. I just think it's hard for schools. Um, you can't pack all of that in when you have so much to learn. Um, but I do think it limits sometimes. Um, you know, what students think they can achieve because there's, uh, they're just unaware of the opportunities that are out there. I know I was and still, um, you know, I learn of a new opportunity, I think each and every day of what a person's doing and then uh, realize they have the same degree that I'll have. And um, I do think that's something that's lacking from schools. Uh, I don't know the best way to go about changing that, but um, it's something that I've had to learn on my own, like you said, yeah. Yeah, it's not that pharmacy schools are doing a bad job with training or on the education curriculum or anything like that. It's just you can only teach so much material in a short period of time. Um, so it's picking and choosing what is the program going to focus on to train students to be properly equipped for the workforce once they, you know, finally graduate and, uh, you know, go into the real world. So with that, what are your plans as you plan to graduate? How are you approaching your planning to graduate? I should probably be doing more of that, but now that I'm <laughs> closer, which is crazy to say out loud, but um, I've just been trying to do, I told myself from day one, um, you know, I'm not the student that knew I want to do XYZ residency at this program because I want to be a, a very specific narrow field pharmacist. Um, extremely open-minded and I told myself from day one that um, that I thought it was important to just really seize every opportunity to line myself up for whatever um, job I may want um, so that when I get to that point I'm not asking myself like man I wish I would have joined a club or like, man, I wish I would have you know, had a mentor or something along those lines. Um, so really I've just been trying, if something interests me, I've been trying to pursue that. Or um, if it's out of my comfort zone, I've been trying to pursue that or just um, shadowing opportunities, talking to mentors, but um, also trying to go through and consider um, what aspect of the profession or what, um, you know, what field it, within pharmacy is going to fit what I want, you know, post-graduation life best. Um, and a lot of things I've had to rule out because, you know, they're not going to fit what I want. And, um, you know, I do realize that nothing in life is perfect, but uh, you do have a choice, you know, to, uh, to uh, decide which is going to be the most important to you. Uh, and like I kind of said earlier, work-life balance was important to me from the get-go, and that's still important to me. So I've been trying to seek out opportunities that would, um, you know, put me in a good place to have a job that would allow for that. It's so important to think of now rather than later. I've seen too many people take the uh, residency path, and I don't want to single out the residency path because it's a great uh, path to pursue in pharmacy can lead to a lot of really great career, uh, career opportunities. And it's, it's perfect for some people. For other people, it's not so perfect. 
Um, what are some of the key things you mentioned work-life balance, uh, specifically either hours or family time, weekends? What are some real life specific things that you're thinking about to fit in with your pharmacy career? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think all of those things, I mean, that would be the perfect uh, combination, but um, I just know throughout this process of school, you know, I've missed a lot of um, just self, like, you know, you don't have any time for yourself most of the time, or you don't have a lot of time for your family, or you have to miss certain things, and um, real life exam, I mean, everybody wants good hours, but, you know, decent hours at least most of the time or um you know weekends at least most of the time off you know those kinds of things it's hard to say that because you kind of have to pay your dues um but um at least looking at that being a possibility down the line within what i'm trying to go for um i think it's extremely important because if you're if you're unhappy outside of work you know i feel that you're going to be unhappy inside of work and uh, so I'm trying to think of that ahead of time, but um, it can be difficult to make that realistic. It can, no, it can be difficult. And some of the things that you mentioned, some of these things would be great in an ideal world. They exist. They are out there. There are roles out there that you don't work any weekends. Crazy to say in the pharmacy world, but there are jobs out there. You work no weekends. You work no nights. It just, it's, is what truly is important to you. If working hours is the most important and, you, and time on the weekends and nights for your family, then that's great. And there are jobs out there that, that align with that. So to your point, it's all of the things that you're doing to network and explore and evaluate the different options out there is really the best thing you can do. And what we're trying to do is help even supplement that with some of the key things that you need to be thinking about. Maybe people don't even think about this ahead of time. Maybe opening eyes to, hey, wow, I never thought of X, Y, and Z that I should be thinking of as I enter the pharmacy workforce. So you're on the right track. What advice would you give to other pharmacy students, either current pharmacy students or people that are considering pharmacy school? Whew. Um many things, <laughs> but, um, I would say just to have an open mind. And I tell a lot of, uh, you know, my peers that ask, you know, like, why, why do you spend time doing this? Or why did you pursue that club or that position? Or, um, you know, why do you do those things? Uh, kind of like I said earlier, I try to, um, just tell anybody that's said it wants to set them up, set themselves up for the job they want. Just, um, you know, don't let an opportunity pass you when you have the time. So I would tell a student, like a P1 student, just, um, you know, grades are extremely important and I take them very seriously. But um, the more I've been throughout the process, the more I've realized that um, if you don't see some of the opportunities in the networking and shadowing and um, even just figuring out what you'd like to do for fun uh, when you're not studying, um, you know, kind of just being a well-rounded person is more important than just um, making perfect grades, I guess. Um, so just encouraging them to do those things because I, it took me a while to realize that um, it was going to be okay if my grades weren't perfect. <laughs> I love that perspective. That's all of the things that I think, in my humble opinion, you should be thinking about in pharmacy school um, and beyond. So the last question that we like to ask all of our guests, pharmacy student or pharmacist, is where do you think the profession of pharmacy is going in the future? Ooh. Um, and that's a big question, Kaylee. That, that can go in question. any different direction that you want. Um, where I see it going is, and I think it's already started to go this way, um, is off of a dispense-based model and more towards a... Um, you know, an actual patient care based model. And that sounds really formal, but um, what I mean by that is just, it seems, uh, I think a, a professor told us the first day, um, something like, if you think you're going to get paid just to dispense a bottle, um, the same they got paid 10 years ago, then, you know, you're thinking wrong. You're going to have to learn to do more. Um, it kind of took me back because I was like, what do you mean? And they, uh, you know, they've really just harped on, 
you have to find a way to, um, you know, keep advancing the profession. And I think we're starting to do that through maybe more of a team-based approach, um, a more hands-on approach, a more patient-centered approach rather than a product-centered approach. Um, so I'm hoping that it goes in that direction um, and really continues to expand in some of the ways that you've uh, highlighted in some of your shows also. Um, just finding ways to, um, you know, use pharmacy in a different light than it's ever been used before. Kaylin Davis, thank you so much for your time today on The Non-Traditional Pharmacist. Be sure to share your interview with your network. And if there's anyone out there in other pharmacy programs or in a pharmacy students that may be a good fit for The Non-Traditional Pharmacist student series, we'd be very interested in talking with them. Kaylin, thanks so much again. Uh, the best thing I heard you say today was figure out what you like to do to have fun. Make sure your <laughs> professional career fits that with your personal life so you can have a happy, successful professional career. Kaylin, thank you again. Thanks to everyone for tuning in. We will see everyone next time. Yeah, thank you so much.